Hello again. Bob here with our next installment of my journey through the War of the Ring tournament this year. So game two against Saved by Him. Um, I'm guessing, you know, if you follow my videos, you've probably watched the first one. Um, if not, I will give you a few more seconds of me talking slowly to pause and go watch that one if you don't want to have it spoiled for you. It's the one called The Rough Stay at Moria. Um, okay, time's up. So I lost the first game, so it's do or die, right, because it's best of three. So if he wins this game, he's through to the semifinals. Um, I need to win this one to take it to game three and then win that game as well to make it through. But on the plus side, at least we, we aren't playing with tokens, so at least I'm shadow against free peoples with zero tokens. So um, so I start with Denethor's Folly and Palantir. He has Kyrdan and Mirror of Galadriel. That might actually be the best character card in the game to start with. Pretty strong. Um, debatably Wizard Staff. Um, very debatably, though. Anyway, um, so my usual zero eyes, so I roll two and a bunch of monsters. I don't mind that. He gets three movement as well. Pretty decent rolls for both of us to uh, move forward towards our win conditions anyway. Um, my monster Saruman down. He thought for a while here. So I remember thinking just because he paused that he probably had Fear Fire Foes or Book of Mazarble and was thinking about crowning Aragorn. That was what I honestly thought at the time. But I think he paused just to mess with me, I guess. Or maybe something distracted him. Anything could, could have been happening. Anyway, so he moves, and it's a hit, and it's a one reveal. So that is an obnoxious start for the free people. It's like, on one hand, it's nice that you got hit, so Gandalf's dead. Um, but on the other hand, it's, it's a one reveal. You would really rather not get revealed, and, and rather not, you know, a three would be ideal. Or not getting hit would also be ideal. So he hides again. I really thought about putting a Nazgul on there just to lay into the corruption strategy. But on the other hand, how many times have I done that, and it just fizzles into nothing. So I decide to devote it to military instead, and I get that Barad-Dur army moving. He moves and gets hit anyway, and it's an eye, so it's another one revealed. That is, got that's like the most annoying start possible. Um, I think two eyes out would be even worse, but um, but yeah, it's still two one reveals in a row anyway. Um, okay, so my armies move along. I decide to put a reroll on him since Corruption is off to such a good start. Um, yeah, and he hides, and I bring in Saruman. I'll be right back. And I'm back. Okay, turn two. Here we go. Um, okay, so I get Worm Tongue and Orcs Multiplying again. Very happy to see Orcs Multiplying again, especially since I didn't end up moving the Baradur army at all. That's uh, that's just lovely. And he gets Faramir and Ents, so also pretty mediocre cards. Um, so Fellowship, okay. One Eye In, one more Rolled. He gets a Will of the West, so that's pretty great. Um, I'm... I'm at peace with my roll, though. Um, so I could Orcs Multiplying again, and with some other mustering, I can make it a, a fine army out of Del Goldor here. Um, so he passes. So, you know, since I have two eyes in the box anyway, and since I want to make Orcs, um, what do you call it, Del Goldor here, a strong army, I decide to use this to move Nazgul and, you know, get that second reroll on the Fellowship anyway, because uh, you never know. Um... Okay, so then I put Palantir down because, you know, obviously he wants this Will of the West for getting Gandalf the White. Um, so he decides to give me a ring to get rid of the Palantir instead, which I think is very reasonable. Um, just like it's turn two, you know, and I do have a Palantir that I could play right now. So, like, do you really want to wait till next turn and maybe roll another Will of the West? Maybe not. Like, that reasonable. Yeah, like I said. Um, okay, so I move the Southrons one step closer to war. He brings in Gandalf. I muster an elite into Del Goldur. He moves the Fellowship once, gets hit twice. I didn't even need the rerolls, and it's an eye. So that's just, I think that was the worst case scenario um, out of the haunt pool there, honestly. Like a, like an eye hitting for two here. Um, that's just, yeah, that's nuts. So he reveals into Moria, takes a random, and it's legless. So uh, that's nice. Would have been worse if it was Strider, I think. Um, so then the Moria tile draws a 2R. Um, would have been nicer for me as a shadow player to draw one of these non-revealing tiles, but still better than an eye. So that's something. Um, and he decides to just take the corruption because I think he extra wants to keep Strider so that he can hide. You know? um, so now I play Orc Multiplying again. I'm feeling very good about the army in Baradur. Um, Fellowship hides, and the army sets out towards the Dew Line, and the Baradur army sets out to wherever else it might go. Um, this is kind of a variation on the opening. Um like a while ago in one of my videos, I, I, I mentioned an opening that I was trying for a bit, um, shared with me by Pacquiao, where the Baradur army, instead of doing the traditional running up to the Dew line and Dol Guldur goes to get Lorien, um, you leave the Dol Guldur army for now. And this army goes out through Minas Morgul and goes up uh, along, like kind of towards the Dead Marshes. And you can threaten either Minas Trith or Rohan or Lorien. 
because it's actually the same amount of steps to Lorien as to Woodland Realm. So if you do end up going to Lorien and going for the two Elven Strongholds, it's the same amount of movements overall. Anyway, um, so this is kind of a very... I'm not going through Minas Morgul, but similarly, like this army doesn't really need to go to the Dewline anymore since the Baradur army... Uh, sorry, since the Dolgoldur army is so strong. It's probably... I'm, I'm planning on heading this way. I don't know where I'm going with it yet. Maybe Lorien, maybe Minas Tirith, maybe Helm's Deep. Uh, kind of depends on how the next rolls look. So I get an absolutely beautiful card draw of Balrog and Corsairs. I think I, if I got to pick my cards out of the deck, I would have picked those. Um, and he gets Pass of the Loses, and there's another way. Like, there's another way is a good card. I feel like you would have just rather picked it up a couple turns later. Um, okay, so one eye in, two more rolled, and he rolls three Palantirs. How lovely. Um, so he moves and he's safe. Uh, first safe movement of the game <laughs> when he was on five dice instead of, you know, two. Uh, this game is funny like that. Um, so I put down Balrog uh, just in case he, you know, used a ring to move again and got revealed. Like uh, the Fellowship's just been getting hit so hard that I feel like keeping that corruption pressure up is, uh, in this specific case, I think it's worth spending a die on. Um, it's a little bit sad because if I'd kept that character die, I could have used it with a ring to take this army and go one, two, three, four, five. As it is now, I only have four attacks, so I can only park in West Demnet. I can't besiege Helm's Deep this turn. Um, there's also, I could get the Witch King this turn. I could go into Old Forest Road and attack Carrick and attack Dale and get the Witch King. But especially since I can just walk into Old Forest Road, there's no need to bring the North to war. I'd rather just ignore them and get the Strongholds first. You know, um, I guess also with the character die, I could have attacked the elves three times to get the Witch King this turn. But honestly, like all four of these, all five of these dice were attacks anyway, so I don't feel the need to rush the Witch King right now. Um, so anyway, so I move into Old Forest Road and I move this army towards West Emnet. Um, so he thinks for a while, right? Eh, <laughs> he thought for a long time here. Um, yeah, not the greatest cards I've ever seen. Um, like specifically for this scenario where you can't move the fellowship, there's nothing to muster really. Like you could muster Gondor or the elves uh, or Rohan down, but that's that's one die and you still have all these dice. So then he picks, oh no, he didn't pick up a card. He picked up a card before, I think. Did he pick up a card already? Okay, he drew a character card. I guess it was Reboot the Swifter and then he checked Pats of the Loza, So Okay, so now he plays Faramir's Rangers. Um, I keep walking. I am also going to walk this army over to Umbar, like especially since I picked up Corsairs. That's just lovely. Um, he musters Rohan a step towards war. I walk into East Emnet and finish walking to Umbar. Um, yeah, very tough. He thought about this one for a while, too. There's a few different things you could do here that would be reasonable. You could spend a ring to move the Fellowship again. You could spend a ring to move Rohan armies. You could move the Forts of Eisen army to Helm's Deep and this army to West Emnet to get them in the way. And hopefully some survivors would get to Helm's Deep. Um, I wouldn't have a good card for picking them off. So decent odds that one or more of them would. Um, or you could also just draw a card. Because I think literally none of these are playable. Well, you could play Ents. And then, I don't know. There's another way just for the healing. I guess that would be okay too. Um, or we prove the Swifter to move Gandalf somewhere. But you don't really want to do that either. So, yeah. Um... <laughs> So he draws a card, and it is Scouts, so that's a useful card. Um, and then I walk into West Emnet and move the Mount Gundabad army closer to help against the Dewline. So I pick up Ring Wraiths and Half Orcs. I'm more great cards. Very happy to see Ring Wraiths, especially. Um, so he picked up Bilbo Song and Aomer. Aomer, a very tantalizing card. Man, if he'd picked that up last turn, that would have been a very splendid use for one of his Palantirs or Musters there. Um, but now it's come, you know, where he has exactly one die that he gets to spend before I do anything else. So now he's got to pick. Um, so he checks Mirror of Galadriel. That's, yep, that's a reasonable choice. And I wonder what else he checks. Uh, and Spirit of Mordor. Yeah, Scouts might have been useful here, but but the rest of these are good cards too. It's it's tough when you get these, like, useful late game cards, but it's early game. You know, that's it's just tough. Um, okay, so Fellowship declares out. I use the Balrog, and I get a three, which is which is I, that's that's pretty good. Um, I say would have rather got one of the revealing tiles, but there's not that many of them in there. So this is uh, quite a, quite okay. Um, so out comes Gimli to fight the Balrog. He He's still mad about the Balrog being in Moria, so he stays behind to fight it. Um, okay, so one eye in, no more rolled, and he rolls a ton of movement. So a tough choice here for him, for sure. There are several good options here. You could move the Fellowship, 
or you could use this hybrid die to walk these troops in and maybe walk the dwarf into Erebor. Or you could also use it to play Aomer. Um, just like three things that you would all like to do right now, you know? Um, but you can only do one. Um, so he thought about doing the army movements, changed his mind, and decided to move the fellowship instead. And it's a miss. So I think I think that's a that's a reasonable choice because like it's it's a full nine one army here. Um, two regulars or one elite isn't really going to save it. So I think that's the right call. And then he's just going to save this hybrid die for maybe you know hiding with Strider and moving again. So I play Ringwraith or Abroad so that I can get that reroll on him. And I get the Nazgul into position since I'm one muster away from being able to play Corsairs. I'd like to do that this turn too. Um, and one Nazgul here on that army so I can attack Helm's Deep as well. So that's a very, very nice multi-use for that card there. That feels good. Um, Fellowship moves again, and they're hit, and it's another three. Um, he decides to take Strider this time. Uh, reasonable. Uh, just when, when corruption's this bad, uh, sometimes you've got to just leap at the chance to lose him efficiently. Like, losing his ability to hide feels bad, but on the plus side, you're getting closer to Gollum, though. So, anyway. Um, okay, so the Southrons make it to war, uses the Will of the West to move again. The Nazgul gets the hit, so I'm glad I put him there, and it's a zero reveal. Um, so now that hybrid die can't be used to hide anymore. So that's the downside to him having chosen this path anyway. But, uh, but that was a pretty specific tile combination to... Uh, make this happen like this. Uh, so in comes the Witch King. He passes. Um, I attack Helm's Deep. I'm cycling Worm Tongue just for the heck of it. I get my 1-6. He gets a hit back. Uh, nothing too spectacular there. Um, so he uses the hybrid die just to spread out across Rohan just to make it more difficult for me to take. Um, so I think about trying to flatten out Rohan here, but honestly, I feel like I just don't need to. Um, like, especially with Corsairs to play right now and how I would rather do that before I put the Elves to war, you know, in case he has Kyrdan ships. Well, um, I decided I'll just leave Rohan the way it is. If he musters up, great. This army's strong enough. I could probably come get Edoras whenever I want. Um, so I play Corsairs. Um, yeah, it is besieged. Um, he passes. I attack Golamroth. I play uh, We Come to Kill. Um, it feels a little bit bad playing it there because uh, that's a card I really like playing, especially with Devil of Orthanc. Um, but, but at the same time, I don't have any other combat cards that are really going to work here. And I could just press and hope to roll three sixes with um, uh, seven, 14, 21 dice, which like I probably should get, but you never know if you actually will or not. Um, so I get no hits on my first seven. He gets one hit back. Uh, my post gets one hit, though, so that's some justification for playing it anyway. Um, so I press, no card, no card, and I get three sixes this time. So I guess I didn't really need to play We Come to Kill, but oh, well, I did. Um, okay, he hides the Fellowship, and right now I besiege Woodland Realm. So that, that feels so bad that he had Kyrdan ships from turn one. Like, that was the first card he picked up, and I just picked up an earlier Corsair than the Elves were at war. That feels bad. Anyway, um, we're on to the next turn. I pick up Grand and New Pirates Rising. More great cards. He picks up File and Kindred of Glorfindel. Um, I wonder what he chucks. Ants, maybe? No, nope, he chucks Kyrdan's ships. Yeah, yeah, that feels bad, but I think that's the right call. Um, I would probably chuck either Ents or Kindred of Glorfindel. Yeah, out go the Ents. Okay, so Fellowship is ready. I allocate one eye. I roll zero more, and he rolls only one movement. So that's mega frustrating, because if he'd had even a second movement here, there would be a decent chance that he could move once, move a second time, and move a third time with a ring, like against one eye, but with only one movement. Like, unless he moved once, and all these companions died so that he went down to theirs another way, there's no way he can make it to Mordor this turn. And with, like, the military just waltzing in and taking a cheap Helm's Deep and a cheap Dol Amroth and a cheap Woodland Realm is besieged too. It's uh, just very depressing stuff for the free people. It's like, what are you supposed to do? Um, okay, so he moves right away in case I have Day Without Dawn. That makes sense and is safe. So I move Nazgul around to go get Woodland Realm. He plays Kindred of Glorfindel, uh, reinforces Rivendell, picks up a Scouts card. Um, oh yeah, he mentions that he used the wrong guy. I guess he wanted to play more character cards. Um, Anyway, um, so I play Grant attacking Woodland Realm. Um, 
like it, it feels a little bit overkill using Grand here because it, it is a very weak stronghold, but it was more just that like I have a Palantir in hand and I don't have a lot else that I want to do with it. Like I could play that red tile, but I'd rather keep my foot on the gas militarily. So I'm um, just using the Palantir as an attack to blow up Woodland Realm right now. Just, just feels good anyway. Um, okay, so I roll one hit. He rolls one hit back. Uh, my great host triggers, so he's down to one regular. Uh, I draw into another great host, but I don't feel like I need it since I have another 20 dice from Grant to roll one six. So no card, no card. I roll my six. He gets one more hit back. And there we go. It's turn five, and I'm on six points. That's just, uh, you can't ask for much more than that. Um, well, I mean, you could. I could ask for Cruel Weather, too. But anyway. Um, I muster in South Rune. Um, I march my armies together. He passes again. So I'm thinking to myself, okay, he definitely has scouts then if he's passing. Because actually what I think he should have done here, um, personally, anyway, I think he should have mustered Erebor down and then I would attack and he'd scouts away. And then from those two steps, then they'd be at war. But then again, if he did muster down, I would probably just move this army out to Withered Heath and then he'd be stuck moving that regular end. So maybe that is just a waste of a muster die then. Um... Okay, so since he didn't move, I don't want to let him scout in there. I want to make him use his own die for that. So I move out to Withered Heath. And, right, I bring up the army from Dol Amroth to attack Pilar Gear. Uh, now he brings the dwarf into Erebor, and Faramir goes down to threaten Umbar. Um, I walk my armies into Iron Hills, and I bring the one or irregular to defend Umbar. Uh, just, you know, like, could Faramir conquer one regular? Yes, he could. Um it makes it much more dice expensive and, you know, potential to fail anyway. So, um, okay. So he uses another ring to walk Gandalf closer. So I'm thinking, you know, he probably has Gwai Hero Reaper of the Swifter. Um, so I use the character die to besiege Erebor from the Witch King. Um, and yeah, he goes ahead and plays We Prove the Swifter. Um, so then I attack Pelargir. So I could start attacking Erebor, but... I'm not sure why I didn't. I think it was because I didn't have any good cards for it right now. Like, Great Host is almost definitely not going to trigger seven units against four and with no leadership. So I think I, I think to myself that, like, since I have an attack that doesn't need leadership, I might as well attack Plargear since clearly I want to do that sooner or later. So, um, And he uses Scouts Away to go join Faramir down south. Um, so I pick up... and. and the game rewards me that I, I pick up two fantastic cards for fighting Gandalf. So all words of power, which allows me to have that Nazgul leadership and Mumakil. Like I have Mumakil right here in Iron Hills that are clearly on their way to come help. So um, rewards me. I'm just lucky. I don't, I don't know what I'm talking about. Um, okay. Fellowship declares forward to Asgiliath. Makes sense. I roll no more eyes and he rolls plenty of movement this time. So he can uh, definitely make it to Mordor unless I cycle into cruel weather. Anyway, but that's fine because, honestly, I should be able to get to 10 points this turn. Or, or you know, it, it'll be close anyway. Um, fellowship moves, and they're safe. Um, I thought for a bit about which die to use first. I decided to use the character die. So, so here's my plan for this turn. I need to attack Erebor once to get the dwarves to war. Um, then I'm going to use two of these army dice to attack Carrick and to attack Dale, and that will bring the north to war. And then I can use one of these musters to bring the mouth into Dol Guldur. And then, since all nations will be at war, then I can use a ring on the other muster to move the mouth up to Dale to join the Southern forces that came down to conquer it. And then I can use the mouth's ability to move those reinforcements up to Erebor, and then I have two dice left to attack Erebor with whatever's left of this army plus the Southern army. And I will also, with that character die, I can swing some Nazgul leadership down to Pilar Gear to help defend it because he's probably going to join these two armies up in Osgiliath to attack Pilar Gear. Um, so that's what I was thinking. Uh, that, that was my game plan for this turn. Anyway, so I attack Erebor and I use the um, Words of Power here first. Um, he plays Thranduil. It's always sad seeing Thranduil get played like that. Like, what was that? Was that last turn that I took Woodland Realm? I think it was. Or was it the turn before? I can't remember. Anyway. Um, Okay, so I get one hit, he gets three. So that is a pretty good start for him, but I'm I'm okay with it. Like, I have enough bodies from the Southern Reinforcements that this is okay. Um, so I don't press. He passes. I attack Dale from Iron Hills. No card. No card. Um, I get my one hit. He gets one back. 
Um, so I just remember to move the dwarves here now, down once because uh, they, they moved down once from Iron Hills being conquered, once from Erebor being besieged, and once from Iron, uh, Erebor being attacked. So, so these are three steps down. He thought about doing something. I'm curious what he was thinking about doing. Um, he ends up passing. So like maybe he was thinking about moving this regular over to try to be annoying. Um, I don't know. Or maybe he was thinking about reuniting in Osgiliath now before I got in the way. Um, anyway, he passes. Um, now I attack Herrick. No card, no card. I get my one hit. Um, so the north is at war. Uh, so now I bring in the mouth, and now he moves the fellowship again, and it's not hit. Um, so I was really tempted. Like, I really wanted to put a regular here in Osgiliath first, just so that he couldn't use one die to join these two armies together to fight me for Pelargir. But I really wanted to move leadership first and then do an army movement. Um, for the sake of efficiency. And I would rather take Erebor this turn and lose Pilar Gear so that he's at least down to four dice next turn and a dunk is impossible then. So, anyway, I will be right back again. Okay, back in red this time. It's fun that I get delay so you can guys can find out what colors I'm wearing on which days. So, anyway, I specifically wore red today for playing a game as Shadow. thought it would uh, help enhance my uh, just overall bloodlust for conquering things. So, anyway, um, so right now I'm using the ring to move leadership. So I move all the Nazgul down to Polar Gear except for the Witch King and the Mouth up to Dale. Because, you know, I figure since Gandalf Shining um, might as well have all the Nazgul down here for the inevitable fight that's coming. And I like keeping the Witch King here because I don't know how many times I'm going to need to attack. Like if it goes south, like getting to cycle those cards is pretty useful. So. Um, that's why I do it like that anyway. So he gathers his armies. I think about moving into Losarnak here um, to threaten Minas Tirith, but I would rather threaten winning this turn, and I need two attacks to do that. So if I do move there, um, I don't know. It's, maybe I should have, actually. I don't know. Anyway, um, so I move my army out to Minas Morgul. Because so, like, I'm kind of, I, I think he might win, but he might not. It's It's hard to say. Um, but anyway, these armies will probably significantly weaken each other no matter what happens. So say he does weaken my army and it retreats back to Dol Amroth. Then I have this army here, which will be fresh and hopefully strong enough to conquer Pilar Gear next turn. Anyway, is what I'm thinking. Um, so yeah, so I get that army together and I get that army together. Uh, yeah, in Minas Morgul and Erebor respectively. So he separates all the remaining companions to Osgiliath, which I think makes sense. It's a little bit of a what do you call it? Um, right. And of course, he doesn't have to worry about cruel weather because I don't have any character dice left and I already used a ring. So that was a downside to this plan is that I'm not threatening cruel weather. Like he knows I uh, don't have it or if I do have it, I can't play it anyway. So um, so now he has more leadership than me. And uh, no, I guess we're equal on hit points, um, but he has one point on leadership and he has a captain of the West. Um, but I have the defensive advantage off the start. I have two decent cards here. What, what, what does he have in terms of cards here? He has Valor, which is nice. Um, Heroic Death is I. It's not great. Um, Faithful Strike is also meh. But it is playable anyway. Um, okay. So I use the Mouth ability to attack Erebor. Um, Gandalf Shines. Which one am I playing first? Probably Great Host. Yeah, Great Host. Um... Okay, so I roll one six, and he rolls two hits back. Uh, so my great host triggers. Uh, I press again, and now I'm playing the Muma kill, I think. And I get two hits, but he also gets two hits. Um, but that's fine, because I still have some elites to press with. So I should still, you know, with um, seven dice a couple times, should still be able to roll one six. So interestingly, he could have played Heroic Death here to try to style out. I think he was correct to not do that, though, because it probably would have fallen anyway. Um, and saving it for a closer battle like at Pilar Gear, I think, makes sense if you are going to play it as Heroic Death. Using it for sprinting over the next two turns is also ideal. Um, so I get my 1-6 anyway, um, and he gets one hit back, but that really doesn't matter at this point. So I'm up to 10 points, um, so he's coming to fight me for Pilar Gear. So he plays Valor, I play Swarm of Bats. Um <coughs> He gets one hit. I'm glad my Swarm Bats saved one hit anyway. That's something. I get three back. Um, so that is a good start for me, for sure. Um, he presses. I stay. He says surprising. So to me, that seemed obvious because, like, since I have, like, a hit point advantage and leadership is similar, like, I've, I've 
decent odds of winning this fight. And if I win this fight, I just win the game. But I suppose in theory, I could have also just retreated to West Harondor. And then he has to pick. Because if he goes whole hog into Polar Gear, then I can move into Osgiliath and he can't make it back in time to defend Minas Tirith. So maybe that's why he thought that was like clearly the right move. Um, and of course, if he doesn't move whole hog into Polar Gear, then I can just attack it back again and, and take it back. So anyway, I stay. Um, he plays Fateful Strike against They Are Terrible. Um, so he gets three hits and, uh, well, it says it's four. Um, and eventually he gets back to his reroll, but misses on that one too. So we both get three hits, but his Fateful Strike does not succeed in killing an Asgul. Uh, yeah, I don't don't see it very often used to just to try to kill an Asgul, but uh, desperate times, you know. Um, so I stay again because I think, you know, all I need is to roll three hits on my next roll and then that army is wiped out and I win. Um, so he plays Heroic Death here, though, and he gets three hits and I get just one. So that feels bad for me. Um, yeah, so he presses and he thinks about it for a bit, comes in with the whole force, which I think is necessary because if it was... Like, if he left Boromir and a regular or two behind, I would be very sincerely tempted to attack again. Um, so I just, yeah, I bring out my new army, and I decide to retreat to Dol Amroth just in case, like, he picks up a sudden strike and attacks first and wipes out those two regulars and the four Nazgul. Then it's just one regular is all that's keeping him from uh, retaking Dol Amroth. Um, so he's made it to Mordor, and he's not dead yet, um, but he's down to four dice, and I'm up to ten. And all I need is one more point. So it's uh, it's very grim stuff indeed for him. Um, so I put in one eye because I have to. I roll two more eyes. And he rolls a, you know, a, a good roll for, for what it is. Um, but yeah, like how, how do you possibly not lose here? <laughs> he um, takes a valiant effort at it. I thought he must have scouts again when he did this, uh, moving the regular out to Osgiliath. Um, it does slow me down anyway, but I still have literally all of these can be attacks for me because I can turn one muster into an attack with the mouth and another one with the ring. So uh, so I'm feeling pretty good about this anyway. Um, so I decide um, to leave this army here. Like he can threaten to take, retake Dol Amroth, but that will be like one, two attacks. So then he's not moving at all or he's moving once with a ring. And this army has good odds of being able to retake Minas Tirith, especially since I just picked up a Deadly Strife. Um, so I decided to just, you know, if he gets it, he gets it, I'll go get Minas Tirith instead. So I move my leadership around. I leave two Nazgul there just to make it more likely that he'll fail at it if he does try to take it. Um, so I attack Osgiliath. I'm cycling Orc Patrol just for the heck of it. I was really expecting him to scouts away, but he does not. Um, so I get my one hit. He gets not a hit back. He musters an elite in Minas Tirith. I conquer Polar Gear um, just to make it more difficult for us. So, so now, like, these two dice need to be spent retaking Dol Amroth if he's going to do that. Um, so if he spends a die retaking Polar Gear, great. Then I'll go get Minas Tirith, and, and that's GG. Um, or I can go get Edoras, and that's GG. So, so that's why I did that anyway. Um, so he passes. I attack Minas Tirith. Um, he passes again. I attack me to Strith with a Deadly Strife against Advantageous Position. I get one hit and another hit. I, I only just barely got my two hits, but that's that's all I needed, though. So um, so that's GG. Um, he decides to keep moving the Fellowship anyway, uh, just just for the heck of it. Gets a one. That's nice. Um, I decide to go after Edoras because might as well rack up more points. Um, he moves again, hits an eye, goes up to nine Corruption, and now he says GG. Yeah, it's... Uh, it's a, a very rough hand for him to try to do anything with. I, I think there's, like, I might have done a couple things differently, but I'm still very sure I would have lost if if uh, we were playing the other sides here. Um, and the things I would have done differently, I don't think were, like, better, just different, you know? Like, uh, like you can both be in the top 10 and decide to do different things, and they're both uh, just different. No, neither one is necessarily more right or wrong than the other. Uh, that's one of the things I love about this game. There's so many different things that might happen down the road that you can just prefer a different bucket of snakes. You know, like I would rather prepare against this eventuality or uh, move towards this hopeful objective. And you never know. The dice might reward what you're going for or they might say, ha, you lose. So anyway, um, statistics. Um, overall, he's plus one on movement, plus a couple on hits. Um, I was also plus a couple on hits. Um, my dice were overall plus two on attacks, so that's pretty good. 
um, yeah, these statistics make it look like it was a pretty close game, but I, I guess the, um, yeah, just when the different dice showed up, like the fellowship had a really hard time. This doesn't show that. And also just like the cards were so much better for me than they were for him. Um, yeah, not, a, not a very exciting content, but, uh, obviously I'm happy with the W I'm happy to take it to game three. Um, yes. Yeah. Losing a game three feels a lot better than losing in two games because you, at least you pulled one back. So, um, so we'll have game three for you. Um, either on this Thursday or next Tuesday. And hopefully that one is better content. Um, yeah. Winner moves on to semifinals. Exciting stuff. Uh, thanks for watching. I will catch you on the flippity flop.